good beautiful morning everybody silas back again today we are finally done with the farm cleanup all the equipment is here except for the skid steer i'm going to go back out and get that later this week but other than that everything is here got the loader moved back yesterday i'm going to drive this loader here over to the main yard here in a little bit actually i may not do that today i may just wait till tomorrow to do that i'm not sure yet i've got about two days of nice weather to get stuff done so i may just stay here for a couple days and then wait till it's cold to drive it back over there i don't know if you can see the steam coming off of this stuff or not it was pretty chilly last night, but it's warming up pretty good this morning. It's supposed to get up in the 50s today and tomorrow, and then the high is supposed to be down in the teens or 20s. So it won't be super, super cold, but I'll try to do everything I can today. This farm cleanup has been by far my most popular series. Now, the farm cleanup I did uh, last spring, that was pretty popular, and that's actually what built my channel was that farm cleanup. And I had a couple of really popular videos out of that, or one really especially. It's got almost a million views now. But as a whole, this cleanup has been a lot more popular and I've gained a lot of subs, gained a lot of views off of it. And so I really appreciate all the support, guys. That being said, anytime that you start getting more people noticing your videos, you always get the trolls out there, everybody accusing me of being a, a ripoff of American Pickers and stuff like that. I don't, I don't see any way that American Pickers and I are similar. Uh, they're a multi-million dollar production value and I'm just a guy with a camera. So I don't, I don't see exactly how we compare there. But that's, that's okay, people want to think that that's fine. And then I did have a bunch of people accuse me of throwing away too much good stuff. And so I'm gonna take you guys around real quick and show you all the stuff I saved. This tub is just clear full of stuff. I mean, just clear full, we packed it full. There's all sorts of good stuff in there. Some of it's not super valuable, like a lot of this stuff, like this here, that's a 10 or $15 piece. That's a $10 piece. These here are probably like five bucks a piece. With that stuff there, I can just run it over to the farm auction uh, this spring and just take a whole truck and trailer of it out there and dump it. I don't have a whole lot of time invested in it. And so I'll be able to, to make decent profit of it, profit off of it time-wise. And I got these little things here, this old washing machine, that. Got those old gates over there by that car. Got all this stuff here. I got this trailer here packed clear full once again of all sorts of stuff. I mean, you name it, we packed it in here. All sorts of cool stuff in here. Over here, I've got this big pile of iron wheels, that iron piece down there, these pieces here, all this tin. I've got these old wooden sideboards, this old wagon cart thingamajigger. I've got this tub here, clear full of stuff once again. Packed in here, there's an old barrel and just tons of neat stuff. Got these old wheels, this old mailbox. I mean, you just, you name it, and it's hidden down in here somewhere. Bunches of cool stuff in there. Then in here, I've got several tubs and buckets and barrels full of stuff here that I saved. This horse bucket is clear full. This watering trough, clear full of stuff. And then back here, I've got a whole bunch of furniture and other neat odds and end pieces. Got the old couch, file cabinets, all sorts of stuff there. And then, well, you can't really see it from here, but over yonder across the way, over there by that van and those box truck backs, there's a whole bunch more stuff over there that I saved. A bunch more iron wheels and just cool random stuff. And then up front, I've got even more stuff that I saved. And then out back, I've got even more stuff that I saved. So I saved a ton of stuff from this farm cleanup. And so, I mean, you can't save everything. It's physically impossible. So this is basically just to let people know that I did save a ton of stuff. I wasn't just pitching everything in the iron. So don't worry, it's okay. These old gates are really cool here. Those are pretty neat, they're big. But you can see they're bigger than that headboard even. All these engines bunches of random stuff up there oh and i got a whole bunch of these rings most of them are bigger than that their tractor wheels is what they are but they bring the most money for burn pits for burn rings i've got some stuff laying here i put some more stuff in there bunches of cool stuff plus i already sold some stuff so just it was never ending i think i hauled home about i want to say eight truck and trailer loads of stuff that i saved and that's not counting the vehicles and tractors that I hauled home. That's just the other stuff. So I hauled home quite a bit of stuff. 
But enough of all that, I just, like I said, I just wanted to make sure you guys knew that I do save stuff. I'm not just totally crazy and smash happy. I say the stuff that I knew I had a market for or thought I could find a market for. If it was kind of iffy or if I know the market isn't very strong for that around here, then it went in the junk. Like I had a ton of people give me grief over that old drill press that I pitched, but around here, those don't bring much money. Those are about a $25 to $50 piece in that condition. And $50 is definitely tops. And so it just wasn't worth it to me to lug that heavy thing all the way home to make, you know, more than likely 30 or 40 bucks on it. I know they're worth big money somewhere else, but here they're not. Here they're super common and they have no value. And that thing's so heavy, it would cost a fortune to ship it anywhere. So that's why it got thrown in the scrap. I hope you guys understand. Anyway, going on, today's agenda. Now you may remember I tried to do this the other day and it didn't happen, <laughs> but today I've got to make it happen because I have the good loader here now. I brought the old loader back over here and the old loader works okay. It's just kind of slow and bouncy. And so while I have the good loader here for one or two more days, I want to get all these cars in this area moved. I believe I sold this cab. I believe it's headed to the United Kingdom. Uh, the guy is uh, checking on shipping to get it to the, the place where they put it inside the export container to ship it over there. He's supposed to get a hold of me. And I believe, yeah, this bed here is sold to my buddy, Sean, that helps me out a lot. And honestly, he'll probably want the international bed underneath it. So all I have left of these is I got this long bed Studebaker here and then another short bed over here. I'll try to find a home for them. I advertised them super cheap on the Studebaker page for a little more than scrap value and I haven't really had much interest in them. So it's not looking very good for them. And then I've got this bed here. Same thing, I put it on the Studebaker page, but come to find out Studebaker bought this bed design from Dodge. Well, not actually from Dodge. It's from the company that stamped the beds for Dodge. But this was used on 61 to three or four, somewhere in there, Studebaker champs. But it was also used on 57 to 60 Dodge. So this is a good, clean, rust-free short bed for a Dodge out of the late 50s. And so if I advertise it as a Dodge bed instead of a Studebaker bed, It'll bring a whole lot more money, so I'm going to go ahead and save this one for sure. Everybody's always asking for prices, so if somebody is interested in this bed, I would take $400 for it. You figure out your own shipping, I can help load it. And some of these other cars really should be saved as well, like this one here, this old Deluxe. I think this is a 50 model, 49, 50. I don't, I'm not an expert on these. I'd have to look at the body tag to tell you exactly what year it is. But regardless, it's pretty clean car. It's got just a tiny bit of rust in it. Uh, along the bottom edge and in the floors but really overall it's pretty solid got one crunch fender but a broken windshield just odds and ends but it is a two-door it's got that slope back design to it it's a good looking car this would make somebody a really good builder here's a little bit of the rest i was talking about here if somebody was interested in this car i would take fifteen hundred dollars for it once again you figure out your own shipping i can get some wheels put on it but beyond that and i can help load it but beyond that the rest of it will be on you I don't have a title for it, but I provide a bill of sale with everything I sell. The old GMC is pretty rough. It's probably just a parts truck. Same with the International, the old Jeep. But I've got an old Barracuda back here. I thought somebody might be interested in. There's no motor or tranny. I do have a bunch of extra parts that go with it though. It's a pretty cool car, something like that. Once again, I'd probably be around 1500 on it. I've got this old TT cab. I'm pretty sure that's what that is. I'm not an expert on these either. It's pretty chopped up. Probably good for wall art only or yard art, I mean. But something like that, I'd probably be around $400 on. The Cadillac is sold, and I believe the 64 is sold. I've got this old piece of this old Chevy here. Once again, they'll make great yard art. Probably be around 500 on something like that. And this truck here, I believe, is sold. Then I've got this old Datsun here, pretty cool car. If somebody wanted to save it, I'd probably take about 700 bucks for it. If somebody was interested. I am gonna set up an email just for sales. I know a lot of you guys email me about stuff and I lose it because it goes to my regular email, my business uh, email that's for business inquiries only. And I get so many people email me on there and I don't check that very often because I only check it when I'm expecting something business related. So I'm gonna set up a new email and I'll put it in the description. That way, if you're interested in buying something, you can email me at that one instead of the other one. That way, hopefully I can respond to people because I know some people say, well, I emailed you and you never emailed me back. And, and that wasn't intentional. It just sometimes emails get lost. 
but that's today's agenda. I'm gonna go get the loader, see if it's warmed up yet, and come back here and start moving stuff around. It's pretty cold out here. The loader's still warming up. I've got this old 41 that we drug out of the barn. I've had a lot of people interested in that. It's got a little bit of pitting rust up here on the nose of it, where it was right next to all the cows. But the calves in pretty good condition, other than up in the visor, rats made a nest, rusted it out a little bit. Now the engine is complete and it looks pretty clean. It is stuck by hand. I haven't put a bar on it or tried to break it free. I'm pretty sure it would break free, but I can't guarantee that. I've got this old camper back here. If somebody wanted that, I'd probably let it go for around 2000. Those calves are sold. I got those old Federals. Everybody asks about those Federals. On those, I'd like to get 2,500 a piece. If a guy bought both of them, I'd probably come down a little bit on them. The blue Federal there, I'm probably gonna be pulling the engine out of it. It's got a 261 Chevy in it that runs perfect. And that's worth quite a bit of money online. So we're probably gonna pull the engine out of it. So I may not wanna sell those right away. Oh, and I forgot, this car here, and that other Oldsmobile over there, not this one here, but the one that's kind of looking at us, are packed clear full of stuff off that farm cleanup as well. Once again, back to tons of stuff got saved off that place. Then I've got the old 65 barn find. That one's not for sale right now. I want to get it running first, clean it up. It's just been so cold and I've been busy with that farm cleanup and this and that happening. I just haven't had a chance to get it running yet. But before I sell it, I do want to get it running. The litter's just about done. But one other thing I might do today, which this will be a separate video if I do, is all these cars right here in this area just came from the impound auction. I have not looked in those yet, so there might be some good stuff in those. So we're probably going to do a treasure hunt video. If I don't get that today, I'll for sure do that tomorrow. So sometime, be looking for probably about two days from the time that this video releases, the video of that treasure hunt will come out as well. All right, I think I'm about done cleaning this area out at least. Got a couple of aluminum wheels laying there and there's what's left of a copper radiator laying over there that I ripped out a long time ago. This area here, I need to come in with the bucket and kind of level it down a little bit. There's a few bumps and humps here and there. But other than that, I believe it's ready for the next phase of my project. I've got a really cool idea I want to do in this area. I'm not sure if I want to stick something back there in those trees or not. I might leave that open. I might put a car back there. I think I'm just going to leave it open though. If I want to put a car back there, I can put one back later. I've got that school bus up front. You may have seen a picture of it online. 
I'm gonna wheel it out of there. I believe it'll roll. I'm gonna wheel it out of there and I'll wheel it back here and I'm gonna set it right here. I don't wanna put it under this tree, so I'll probably bring it out to about here. That way there's a little bit of room between the tree and where the bus is at. So I put it right about here. That'll leave all this space back here behind it. I can put something else back here if I need to, or I can just build maybe a lean-to off the side of the bus. I'm not sure what I'll do there yet, but I think this would be the perfect spot for it here. So at this point, you're probably wondering what in the world is he even talking about putting this bus back here and going up on the roof and the shade and all that for. Reason is, is because I am going to turn that bus into a cabin. I know it's all the rage right now to take these old school buses and older school buses or new school buses or whatever, vans and everything else, and people turn them into tiny homes and whatnot or they travel the country and live in campers and that sort of stuff. I honestly have no interest in doing that. I've got three little kids and sometimes my house feels too small. So I can't imagine being stuck inside a bus or a camper. It'd probably be fun for a little while, but just a little while after that, everybody on top of each other, I don't think so. But at the same time, I think it would be really cool to have a cabin out here. Now I don't want to build an actual cabin. I'm not a carpenter. I don't have time for that. So I thought, you know, I've got that bus sitting up there all the windows are up in it. It's got the seats in it still, I gotta take those out. But you know, with a little bit of work, that would make a really good cabin, I thought. I've got this bus over here. You may remember I spent my night in the junkyard video in this thing here, and I thought about using it, but the problem is it's just kind of small because I want to put an actual wood-burning stove in it and everything else, and if I put a wood-burning stove in this thing, there's just not gonna be a whole lot of room to put uh, beds in there or that sort of stuff. Won't be room for a table or nothing like that because it's just gonna be kind of cramped. So I've got a couple other buses that are kind of in between on size. There's one way over there. You can kind of see it through there. We've got that one, but somebody started turning it into a camper and they took all the insulation out of it. And so I'd have to put all the insulation back in and put the body back together. And I'm just not into all that. So I thought that other bus, it's a full size bus. It's about the same size as this one here. Maybe a little bit, Yeah, it's about that size. This in here has got some issues. It's missing some windows, missing some doors. The vents are gone. It's pretty rough, so I don't really want to do it. But that other bus I got up front, I'll take you up there and show it to you here in a minute. It's complete. I just got to do a little bit of work to seal it up, and it's good to go. Here's the bus. I'm going to put it in neutral and take it out back. I'll give you guys a tour of it back there. They're over there running a sandblaster right now, so it's pretty loud out here. So I'll take this out back and give you a tour. This is a heavy beast, that's for sure. It's still a complete school bus. I don't know what's wrong with it. It was actually here when I bought the place. The guy had all three of these, plus that other big one on the other side stored out here. And he said that they ran, but he just parked them out here because there was, he was gonna fix one out of the three, or I don't remember exactly what the deal. The other one out back is wrecked, but he just never got around to it. So he finally just, when I bought the place, I was like, we need to figure something out because I don't want to have other people's stuff stored out here. So he was like, well, I guess I'll just sell them for scrap. So he just sold them for scrap. So I really don't know nothing about them. I can't pick this bus up with the loader. I had to pick it up one end at a time. Luckily, the tires are still on it, so I can just roll it out there. And there we go, exactly where I wanted it. I think that'll be a perfect spot for it there. I don't know, I'll, I'll double check. I may bring it back away from that tree just a little bit further, but I did bring it quite a ways already. So I think that'll be good enough, but we'll see. Let's hop up in there and check it out. One thing I am going to have to do is find a way of latching this door. Right now there's nothing to hold it closed. It just pushes open and closed. So I'm thinking I'll put a latch down here at the bottom and a latch in the middle. That way I can unlatch it. Keep it sealed up. But as you can see inside, it's still complete. All the seats are in it just like it was decommissioned. So I'll have to go through here and take all these seats out. Some of these windows don't quite go all the way up. So those that don't go all the way up, I'm gonna to have to do something with those. I'm sure they just need cleaned out up there in the track and then they'll go up there and latch. The back door still opens fine. I just gotta come through here. I'm not sure exactly what holds these seats in. I believe there's just a bolt. Yeah, it looks like a half inch bolt there and two on the floor it looks like four on the floor so they won't be a big deal to get out of here i'm going to put a wood burning stove in just a small one i'll put a chimney up to the roof 
and that way it can vent out that way. I thought about taking it and venting it out the side. The problem with putting it out the window like that is if you just go up and do a 90 degree angle, that the uh, emissions, if your pipe isn't completely sealed, and even if it is, sometimes it can backdraft into your, your uh, place. So you really don't want to vent at a 90 degree angle like that. But it'll be plenty safe. I think if I put the, the stove there, I've still got all these emergency windows. I've got two on this side and two on this side here to where, and they all work. I tested them all. So if there was an emergency, for some reason, couldn't get out the front door, you can always go out one of the side doors or the back door. Plenty safe in here. I'm not really worried about that. They have those little battery powered uh, carbon monoxide or is it monoxide or dioxide? It's been too long since I've been in school. Not something I talk about very often, so. But anyway, they have those detectors that can detect if there's something bad in the air to where they'll, they'll set off an alarm. Make sure it's plenty safe in here. It's not completely airtight in here anyway, which I am going to airtight it a little bit better. And I'll probably insulate over some of these windows just to help it retain the heat a little bit better in here. The stove I'm going to get heats up to, I think, 900 square feet, which I believe this bus is only 300 square feet inside. So it'll be plenty toasty in here. I won't even have to run it at full full throttle. Yeah, if I've got the stove right about there, I figured I want to put a table in here somewhere, a little dining table, and I'll probably put some, some uh, bases to put air mattresses. I don't want to actually build this into an actual cabin with beds and cabinets and the whole nine yards. The reason for that is, is because this is out in the middle of nowhere. And if I put all that in here, it's just going to get full of rats and mice. Whereas if I just leave it pretty well open and empty in here with just bare wood platforms that aren't enclosed completely, that way you can clean them out easy, there won't be anywhere for them to build nests and that sort of stuff, so I won't really have to worry about that. It's not like I'm going to come out here and stay all the time and I'm not expecting luxury camping. I mean, it's an old bus in a junkyard. I mainly just want it so I can make some videos. i got a lot of really cool ideas of things I want to do out here. And if I had a home base, per se, or whatever you want to call it, it would just make it a whole lot easier for me. So I'm thinking this is going to work perfect for me. I'm really excited for all that content. I don't want to say that I'm going to take the channel in a different direction because that's not really accurate, but I want to start doing some other things. Uh, I, I've said this before. I made this channel just for fun and to encourage people to get out there and find an adventure. I didn't make this channel to make money. I didn't expect to even be making money at this point in time. And I don't make that much money off the channel. I make a little bit and it's nice but it helps pay for cameras and that sort of stuff. But my purpose still is not to make money. I would still want to do this just for fun. And so I've got some fun ideas of things I want to do, and maybe they won't get quite as many views. Maybe they'll get more views. I don't know. That's not the important part. So don't worry. I'm still going to be doing farm cleanup videos when those are available. I'm still going to be doing a few crushing videos here and there. I'm going to be looking at old cars, looking at old barns, that sort of stuff. We're still going to do all of that, but we're just going to do some more on top of that and a little bit less of that. That way it's not so monotonous. The farm cleanups, you just never know what's going to happen. So those don't really get that monotonous. But sometimes crushing cars just gets boring. I've crushed cars my entire life, and it's a job. It's not exciting to crush cars anymore. Now, finding stuff in the cars, that can be kind of fun. And that's the only thing that keeps it exciting is you just never know what you're going to find in the cars. But I don't want to bore you guys, so I want to change the content up just, just a tiny bit. And one last thing that I will have to do before I can put that stove in here is obviously I'll have to put some sort of uh, heat shield on the back over here so it doesn't catch nothing on fire. But then also, this floor down here has that kind of that rubber mat on it. This I'm not too worried about out here, the walkway. But the stove is going to be sitting back here on this, so I'll have to clean a section of this out. And the stove is on legs, so it won't really get hot. But I'll probably put something underneath it just so if ashes or embers fall, it doesn't catch anything on fire. I'll also be installing two fire extinguishers in here, one at the front, one at the back. Just in case, better safe than sorry, they're not that expensive. Yeah, I'll have to do some sort of latch on this to where I can latch it from the outside or the inside because as you can see here, this is all just loose. It doesn't stay closed, sealed tight. And so I want to be able to pull it to where it's completely tight like that and latch it in place. I thought about putting some elbows on here and just dropping a board down in it when I'm inside and just have a normal latch on the outside or I might put a bolt lock on it. I'm not entirely sure what I'm going to do yet, but I'll probably take this stuff off. That way I can put some sort of latch right here in the middle. And then this area up here, what I'm going to do, so once I get that bus situated exactly where I, I know I want it, is I'm going to make a little patio area out here in front of it. And I'm going to put two of those tractor rims together and make a burn pit. That way I can put chairs around it. People can come out. We can hang out, whatever. That sort of stuff. 
Well, I have a little cooking area. I can put my grill, I have a little propane grill, that sort of stuff. I'll get this set up pretty nice up here and all this grass will be gone. I'll mow it all down and around the actual burn pit itself. Up front, I have a whole bunch of just marble slabs off of broken marble countertops. And I don't know that they're marble, they might just be granite. I, I don't know the difference between all that stuff. I'm not an expert, but anyway, I've got a whole bunch of just slabs of that stuff laying in a big pile. And so I'll be able to arrange those out here on the ground. That way the grass doesn't grow around the burn pit. That way it eliminates all that fire hazard. But I've got lots and lots of plans. You guys are probably getting bored with me talking about all my plans. You just want to see it happen. So I'll stop talking about it. But throughout this year, you're going to see me do a lot of stuff in this area. Here's those rings I was talking about earlier. You guys have seen these a million times on my channel. But I'm going to take one of these big ones. Probably that one right there. And I'll take it. Or I might take this one over here. That one over there has got those funky deals on it. But I'll take this one down here. And then I'll take one of these skinny ones and clamp to it. Attach them together. That way it's just a little bit taller. And that'll make a perfect burn ring. And here's all those countertop pieces. These here would be perfect putting around it. I had tried giving this pile away. There's a lot of cool pieces in here that would be good for odds and end projects. But everybody that wanted them wanted me to load them for them. I'm like, man, that's it's kind of a little bit crazy in my opinion. Somebody offers to give you stuff for free and then you want them to do all the work anyway. But anyway, I'm glad I didn't get rid of it because this will work perfect for me now. I can set this stuff down around that fire pit then i don't have to worry about grass growing up and catching on fire well kind of good news i believe this truck is sold had someone contact me on messenger and we worked out a price on it they said they're supposed to come get it beginning of next week so as long as everything works out looks like it's headed to a new home and you guys don't have to watch me cut it up i figured somebody would buy it eventually but if i did have to cut it up i was prepared to i am glad to see it go to a new home though and i'm sure the family that i bought it from will be happy to see it go to a new home as well the guy that's renting the shop now one of his employees is a welder and they just got a new welder wanted to try it out so i said well hey let's try it out on this so they welded it all up for me just kind of stitch welded it all the way around so that'll hold together just fine now so i'm gonna take that out back and get it set up that's pretty cool there that's just about perfect height and what's really cool about this is is with all these mounting holes all the way around if in the future i want to mount something in the middle to hang a kettle or something like that i can make brackets and whatnot that i can just put on here and just have it set to where i can slip the, the unit to hang the kettle on top of that and it just sit right there perfect and then i can take it all back apart really handy fantastic news my truck is done i'm back in the saddle again ran down there and picked it up checked it out it's got brand new radiator fan fan clutch fan clutch bearing water pump uh master cylinder throttle position sensor uh new wheel bearings in the rear i forget what else we did to it we did a few other things to it so <laughs> 2500 later it's going again but everything should be fixed on it now there we go i'm hooked back up to the trailer ready to rock and roll again tomorrow i got these cars right here they're ready to go I got them stacked up. I got two loads there and I got one load over on the other side. I'm gonna haul those into the shredder, make a little bit of room, make a little bit of money to pay for this truck. Then once I get that done, I've got to head back out there and get the skid steer from the farm cleanup because it's still sitting out there. That's the last thing out there. So I'll run out and grab that. And that way tomorrow I'll be completely done with all that. And then Wednesday, the temperature is supposed to drop through the floor. So that day I'm gonna take the good loader right here and I'm gonna take it back to the main yard so I can start crushing cars again. But I'm running out of time for this one today, guys. So I will head out and I will be back in the morning and we'll finish this vlog tomorrow. It's the next morning now. I'm back out here again. Let the Dodge warm up. Well, I'm glad to be back in that. But I thought I'd show you guys this real quick again. I got it set up over here by the bus. It's not level. I got to level the ground a little bit. I tried leveling it out with the bucket on the loader. But the problem is with all this grass here, it just clumps up and it, it doesn't level very good. So I'm actually gonna have to do this by hand coming here with rakes and rake all this dry grass up my dad called he's not feeling very good today and there's a couple things that have to get done today so i've got to take care of those first thing i'm going to do though is go out and get the skid steer that way that is just completely done that way i don't have to worry about that farm cleanup at all anymore don't have to worry about the skid steer being out there so we'll get that done first and then after that i got two other things we're going to do and so you guys can just ride along with me for those one last look at the old barn Make sure my skid, yep, my skid steer is still here. I figured it would be. I haven't had any issues yet. It's an eight old building. For those that are wondering, I believe they found somebody that's going to come take the barn down and reclaim the wood. 
so you don't have to worry about it getting burned but hopefully they come through on that we are loaded up and ready to go one last goodbye all right got the skids around loaded and now i am headed out to get a load of batteries i made it out here looks like i got four crates of them here probably won't get all four crates since i'm doing it with my trailer by myself since my dad's sick and i couldn't find any help last minute notice like this so i'm probably going to try to empty at least two of them that'll get plenty of room for them to put more so i'm going to get busy with this and i'll show you guys when i'm done all right there's one down i'm having to carry these things about 60 feet to take them out there on the trailer so it's a workout especially those big heavy ones that were up on top of this here weigh about 80 pounds a piece that's a long ways to carry 80 pounds one at a time but i'm not going to be able to get all these i'm probably going to get one more basket then they've got a partial basket up front, so I'll probably just empty this one and get that one up front and save those for another day when they don't have their equipment parked in the way. Then I can back right in here. There we go. Made it back to my place. There's 3,980 pounds here. If I would have thrown on one more lawnmower battery, I would have had 4,000 pounds even. The trailer's unloaded, ready to go. I've got a little bit of time left in the day, so I'm probably going to run this car and maybe a few other things into the shredder real quick. All right, I'm headed out. Not a very heavy load, but... Makes a little bit of room out here and pays for the day a little bit at least. Pays for my fuel that I spent today. It's been a while since I've been here. Got that unloaded, came back out here. I got a little bit of time left yet today. So I figured I'd do some control burns. This area here has a lot of big dirt patches on it where the fire won't spread. There's no wind at all. And this grass is only semi-dry. It's still just in a dormant state for the winter. So it burns, but not super quick. So I figured now's the perfect time to go ahead and burn off little areas at a time. I've got my fire extinguishers and water here with me. Like I say, I'm not gonna get too crazy with it. I'm not gonna go anywhere near the cars. But I figured if I could burn off some of this grass right around the burn pit, that'd make it a lot safer. There we go. Got all this out here burned off. A little bit of water and stomping and just real slow and steady. Just burning little tiny areas at a time. Got it all taken care of. I got one little spot back here still smoking. And one little tiny fire burning over here yet. Then to burn off the last little bit of grass over there. What I'll do now is I'll go through and I got some buckets. I'm gonna fill them up with water and I'm just gonna soak the whole area just to make sure everything's out. I had just a little bit of daylight left. So I came out here with the loader real quick and put the bucket on, move the burn ring and just level this whole area. Once that grass is gone, this levels so much easier. But I'm gonna go ahead and close it out here. This started out with a purpose on this vlog and it kind of turned into another, let's ride with Silas and see what happens vlog. And we did all sorts of stuff in this one. I don't even remember everything I did when I'm back editing it. I'm like, oh yeah, I forgot. I forgot I did that that day. I haven't had time to go through all those impound cars yet, but I am going to do that probably tomorrow. Other than that, I'm not going to make any videos tomorrow or the next day probably. It's going to be cold, and I hate filming when it's cold because my fingers freeze. Hope you guys enjoyed this one. Keep checking back. Keep checking back on progress on that thing back there. I think it's going to be really cool when it's completely done. If you enjoyed it, leave me a thumbs up. I hope you have a fantastic rest of your day, and remember to get out there and find an adventure. We'll see you next time.